This is where it all started, around the harbor areas of Los Angeles. I spent the majority of the past two years documenting and taking part in the building of my newest bike. The only thing more special than that day when the bike was completed were the people involved and the journey getting there. This is the story about the ground up build of the Harbor Town Bobber. It's been a really long time since I had a cool bike and it wasn't long after filming Chopper Town I just thought I needed one for myself. I have to really thank Cuddy for putting me on the road to the Harbor Town bike. He told me that Jimmy White had this really cool Triumph Roller just sitting in his shop. It was Matt the Rat's bike, Jimmy's right arm guy and I just thought I had to go check it out and I have to say literally the second I saw it, it was just love at first sight. I mean, this thing was beautiful. The lines, the stance, everything was perfect. Just a couple of days after that, I found this really nice abandoned cafe project. It was a 1971 Bonneville 650. And so now I had just two bikes sitting on my patio. And it was that day, Zach and I were just sitting around these bikes thinking, man, it would be great just to document the entire build. And that's exactly what we did. We took the motor out of the cafe bike and we sent it off to Meatball down at Hell on Wheels. And later that became the movie Brit Town. And for the roller, we really wanted to showcase a few great builders we had in mind. The first guy on our list was Jay Bird. 
He's truly an artist in every sense of the word. I mean, I remember the first time I saw one of his builds, it was just like something out of Mad Max. Um, his style is raw, bare metal throughout the whole bike. He had tiny little handmade intricate parts that were just amazing. And he doesn't even just put time and effort into these little parts, but he puts a lot of time and effort into the function of the bike. I mean, his bikes are made to ride and ride fast. What do you think about my, uh, like my wassail? Yeah, I like I it. I bought this from Billy. Okay. Ha uh, Cuddy's friend. Oh, there's a whole bunch of Billy, man. Billy the painter. <laughs> yeah, he's nice. Billy guy. Cruel. Yeah. This is me. And so, I wanted to kind of, like, a little bung here. Yeah, to yeah, sort yeah. Of, Not level, of course, but kind of go with the line of the bike a little better. Just like eight inch? Instead of just on there. Eighth inch of gap? Yeah, maybe. All right. Just to bring it up mm -hmm. a little bit. To make the right. bottom of the tank level. Yeah, to bring it up a little bit. Hey, 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 hey. Don't, 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 you know. I'm just saying. Rest right there. Yeah. Just leave, leave it alone, you know. Leaking is not a big issue right now. She said not yet. <laughs> John's a John. John's a young star, you know. Yeah, he got a lot, you know, a lot of talent, you know. Yeah. I always, you know, like to support the young builder, you know. Got a lot of, you know, different idea. I love it. Yeah, John and me uh, met at the, what's it called? Huh? Bike a beat off? Bike a build off? <laughs> yeah, we uh, we walk together, build the bike, get a lot of stress. <laughs> yeah. I've been welding off and on since I was 18. I went to college right out of high school, learned how to weld, took auto body stuff like that, basic knowledge courses to learn how to do the things, but. It, it's mainly hands-on to learn a lot of the stuff. I've been reading magazines, motorcycle magazines, hot rod magazines since I was a kid. I'd sit at home, instead of doing my homework, I'd read a magazine about a car, or how to build a motor, or take, take a transmission apart, changing seals, doing just little, little stuff like that. All the little tech articles in the magazine, they help. So. I'm gonna put two bongs in here. Old school way of doing it, hiding your mounting hardware. Drill through here, put a bung in. Once I put the bung through, put a little plate around it and weld along the plate here, as well as the bung already being welded to the tunnel. It's going to give it strength and rigidity through the whole thing. We use 16 gauge steel for this, and this is pretty damn solid. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Um, it's also going to help by way of cracking so it doesn't crack. Like the prop. Like everybody mounts the rubber mounts or tanks on the newer bikes, but for years and years and years, all the old school guys just ran it this way. Fred Hernandez is one of my buddies. He's been running his tanks this way for a long time. Um, I've seen Billy Lane do a lot of tanks this way too. So, is it can it break? Yes, everything can break. You can take and weld four tabs that are rubber mounted, and the tabs can break off. It's it just all depends, but. For this application, the tank's not very big. It's not going to be super heavy. 
the bongs that we're using are pretty solid and everything will be sturdy enough. I don't see foresee a problem happening from the whole thing. Considering that the tank's going to be at an angle, and if it was back here, you can only fill up to here, so you're getting close to a little over a quarter of a gallon, half a gallon of gas right here in this top little section. So you put the filler cap there, you can fill it all the way up. Gives you an extra five, ten miles maybe, depending on what carbs you're running. Yes, you know. Kaboom! Sitting up just a little bit, so it's bung, the bungs are going to sit on top of each other, so that there's a little bit of a space in between the depth and tunnel, just for the vibration. There will be a little vibration, but so the, there's no rattling noise, pretty much. <laughs> Jeremiah, Jay's friend. I uh, met him over the years, riding bikes, building things. We hang out most of the time, kick it and shop, and do custom stuff for people, and you know, go to the bike shows. <laughs> hey, Actually, making a couple of reinforcement pieces that go over for backup. So it's when you weld the bung in, it's got a little extra support so it ain't so weak. So I'm making two little brackets that slide up around it to reinforce just where the bungs go through the tank so it's extra material there for strength. Started riding bikes probably when I was like around seven years old. First experience uh, with gears. My dad had a big part of influence in my life. I mean, since a little kid I can remember, you know, growing up and my dad knew lots of friends and he rode Harleys back in the 60s when you know, basically bikers weren't cool then. They weren't allowed, you know, in restaurants to, you know, tell him to actually leave because of his appearance, the way he looked, what he rode. People would spit on him, you know, call him white trash, the whole nine. So uh, pretty much inspired by my father. He basically told me everything I know now, you know, and showed me a lot of in and outs on how to build stuff. That'll be good.
pretty close right there. Sometimes is when the heat transfers from where you're welding at in a certain area, it gets hot and it expands. So what happens is that on the back side, when it's actually getting welded on one side, it might pull apart. So what you're going to do is spot tack all the way around to yeah. keep it together. And then as he welds it, it'll stay in a uniform state so it doesn't you know spread and you have a big old half-inch gap on the other side by the time you get around to it. That's it, man. All set. Weld it up. Jay did it. What do you think? New Yorker. Martini. Jeremiah and Jay did a really good job. The tank is coming out really nice so far. The build is at a point where the frame needs to be cleaned up. So Zach and I are going to take a trip out to Denver to visit our buddy and Sinner Nomad, Irish Rich, from Shamrock Fabrication. Not only is he going to work on the frame, but he's going to introduce us to the legend, Dennis Goodson from Goodson Air Cleaners. My name's Carlos, I'm from Santa Fe, New Mexico, and um, this is my bike. Uh, it's a 2004 uh, Atlas uh, rigid big gun frame with a uh, stock 80 inch Harley Davidson motor, Evolution. It's got a lot of custom work on it, done by uh, Irish Rich over at Shamrock Fabrication in Broomfield, Colorado. It was a great experience. Uh, meeting Rich and going up there, I actually had the bike uh, being built up there in Broomfield for almost about a year and a half and it was a really cool process meeting a lot of cool people and Rich introducing me to uh, more of the traditional style of building bikes and you know that kind of uh, custom culture lifestyle was pretty awesome and uh, I have a beautiful piece of art to show for for all the hard work he did I think with your project you guys will you know definitely be in great hands he's he's a really knowledgeable guy and a uh, nice person and and uh, he knows what he's talking about he's not somebody that's gonna to bullshit you you know he's definitely one of these guys that he is what he is and he knows his shit. Shamrock Fabrication has been here for five years but I've been doing motorcycles and street rods now as a hobby and a living for 39 years next year will be like my 40th anniversary I count 1968 as kind of my anniversary date because that's when I got my motorcycle license. So, you know, I count that as, a, as like my birthday. Actually, nobody in my family was involved in motorcycles. I just, uh, you know, it was the, the story of being a little kid and being on vacation in Canada. And at the time, we had a big uh, 59 
Mercury uh, Colony Park station wagon. And uh, it was the nine passenger one and the back seat faced out the tailgate, you know, which was a real good safety feature as soon as you got rear-ended, everybody flew out the back tailgate, you know. <laughs> so, uh, we were up in, in Ontario and uh, us kids sat in the back and then my folks stacked, folded the middle seat down, stacked all the stuff in between, kind of form a barrier between them and us. And at the time there were three of us in the family. And uh, we were up in Ontario and I was looking out the back window and uh, there was a guy coming on a bobber. And I didn't know it was a bobber at the time, but I knew it was a motorcycle and I knew it was loud and I was probably I was seven or eight years old. And, uh, you know, I kept getting closer and closer and the closer he got, you know, I looked out and I said, uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and I was hooked from there. And it was, uh, it was a lifelong deal. But I always love motorcycles. I always do. It's Steve. Steve, open the door. This is my partner, Steve. Steve comes in and uh, helps me out part time. Not to talk him up, I don't need to, but you know he's the jack of all trades. Um, you know I wanted to learn from someone that knows everything about everything, uh, fabrication, wiring even paint, um, body paint, assembly, and putting bikes together the right way. And uh, Rich is the guy to do it, so. Steve's tuned into this stuff, so it's like uh, a real good partnership. We get along pretty well, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah. <laughs> this thing looks like Swiss cheese, so we're gonna have a lot of filling work to do. We gotta be careful up here, and we'll know better when uh, we get it back from the sandblaster exactly where the brass is because it can't, weld, can't weld over the top of the brass. So we're going to have to be real careful. But once it's done, it's going to be a nice, clean, clean frame. Ready, guys? Let's get it blasted. All right. Let's go. We're at What a Blast uh, Blasting Facility, and we're uh, at the north end of Denver in uh, one of the industrial areas. And this is Dennis. This is the owner of the uh, of the blasting facility. As long as I've been doing this as a living, uh, I've been bringing the stuff down to Dennis and he does all the blasting for me. Well, when, once we get fired up, we'll come in here and, and Kurt will get after this with the, with the um, blaster and we'll get her cleaned up so Rich can do some fabricating. This is this is going to be the hardest part here because what you're doing is you you've got to take off the bracket that somebody else already welded on here, and uh, you don't know how far they burned into the frame rail, how much of the weld is on the frame, how much of the weld is on the bracket, how much of the weld is underneath both of them if there was a gap, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to cut into the side of the weld until we can find a part line, and we're just going to pull it right off of the. Uh, right off of the frame. Now when this bracket comes off there's going to be a maybe rusty discolored area underneath the bracket but that you can take care of with some 80 grit sandpaper. That's uh, maximum scarring on the bracket that we don't need, minimal scars on the tube, the Wall thickness of the tubing is pretty much what it was, and uh, it's pretty hard to tell there was a bracket there. Every time somebody put a tank on here, they drilled a new set of mounting holes. Same thing with the seat. 
oil tanks, all that stuff. So, uh, you know, when I get a frame in like this, it's it's not uncommon to have uh, to have stuff like this that needs to come off. I could TIG weld these holes closed, but what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a big welder because the majority of the people that uh, are doing this uh, in their garages and that have MIG welders. So I'm going to work in a MIG so that way if uh, somebody watches this and they want to try and duplicate this at home, they're going to have a good basis and they're going to know how the MIG operates. What I'm going to do to fill the hole is I'm going to start on the edge and what I'm going to do is start melting the edge and I'm going to add the MIG wire to it and I'm going to work it around in a circle and I'm going to start filling on the side and I'm going to work towards the center and pretty soon I'll get in the middle and I'll stop and the hole will be filled. It's, uh, it's not that difficult to do and uh, like I say if you use a thinner wire and uh, a high amperage and a hot temperature you can melt it and fill it really quick. You'll be surprised how fast the holes fill. And uh, then once all the holes are filled I'll grind them all down, then I'll work this whole rail at one time, and we'll get a nice round shape back to it again. And uh, cross your fingers, it, uh, it'll look just like it did when uh, it came out of whoever's factory made this. I opened my shop in 84 and uh, put a lot of metal out the door. The air cleaners I started in 94 and uh, didn't uh, put them out on the market till 97, which I, the year I got my patent and uh, decided to go ahead and start producing them. Everybody will remember from, uh, from Chopper Town the air cleaner that was on Cuddy's bike was Dennis's uh, little breather style of air cleaner. Cuddy called me when they were putting his bike together and he said, I'd really like to have a Goodson air cleaner on the bike. He said, uh, you know, Rico and I are building it and there's some guys that are filming the build and uh, we'd really like to use a Goodson. Nelson Cano was working for Chica at the time and Nelson called me up and he said, hey, can we get a couple air cleaners? for a couple of the bikes that Chica's building. And people saw them on the Chica bikes and uh, between the website and Chica and, and that, they just went boom. They just, everybody saw them and everybody wanted them and nobody knew where to get them. And uh, they still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Only bang out so many, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. true because Dennis is... They're all handmade, you know. Uh, it's, it's a one-man shop. I mean, everybody thinks that this, this is a big production, and, 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 and the process is big, but, you know, it goes from the, the foundry to the polishers to here, and Dennis Hand assembles every one of them, and he's the Lone Ranger. There's no Tano in here doing this. I tried to stay with the period, 1940, everything on it's either 1940 or older except for a few parts. But uh, the gas tanks are 1940. They've been cut down. They were a set of fat bobs. And of course, they're axed in now. I inlaid the uh, eighth inch into the gas tank on each side, then inlaid the, uh, the bar and shields, the patent uh, bar. The fender I cut down an inch and a quarter on the width and uh, inlaid the the tail light, Bob the fender, put this rib on here. The tail lights on it are uh, 37 automotive passenger car tail lights. The switch is World War II, uh, it has the blackout light on it, which is for the running lights. It works the running lights down here. The gear shift knobs, the stock Harley one that I inlaid with brass. I use the original tank shifter, which a lot of guys probably hate me for that but I use it for the jockey shift. This is uh, an old syringe. 
that I took and made a, the license plate light. It's old, it's probably 30s. And that sets in there lights, illuminates the, the plates. And these are uh, 40s, 30s, 40s uh, faucet knobs. I put the little brass on top of them. The little air cleaner over here is I made it especially just for this bike. I, I made a form for this. I, I make these in the shop. Uh, I'm not a leather guy, but uh, I wanted to make these. This is watertight little uh, pouch with convoluted foam. Inside you can uh, put your sunglasses, cell phone, or whatever you'd like in there. <laughs> Nine millimeter fits. <laughs> This thing is like Swiss cheese, you know? Well, the fucking Fuck. holes all over the place here. Every time I put something on here, there's another fucking hole. Let's plug them all. There's another hole. Look at it right here. What the hell was this one for? That this was full of mud in here. What the fuck is that? So when they cut these off with the torch, uh, they went right through the neck. So what they did was they put uh, a little teeny tiny plate back there and they put a couple little chicken shit welds on there to hold the plate and then they just stuffed it full of Bondo. So while I was trying to clean the Bondo out that was left inside the welds, the little plates fell inside the uh, neck. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, cut another piece out of the uh, tubing that I have over there out of my scraps and lay it inside. We'll weld a bead around there. And we'll weld a couple fill beads across the top. We'll try and restore this neck section here. They're in there solid now, and uh, that's a, it's a nice solid repair. I'm happy with it. Compared to what it was before, that's pretty damn nice. I've always been into motorcycles, ever since I was young. My friends and I, we grew up riding them, working on them, just having good times. One of my favorite things to do was to buy old dirt bikes and rip them apart, put them back together, restore them back to new, ride them for a while and sell it. Dirt bikes were fun, but I'll never forget the day I got my first chopper. This thing was sick. It was a 1972 Sporty, 70s through and through, right down to the airbrush tiger on the gas tank. It had a girder front end, it had this cool sissy bar with a cross in it, it had drum rear brakes, no front brakes, I mean, it was perfect. It didn't run when I bought it, but after a week we got it going, and I just, I'll never forget that first day we took it out. Jay calls his buddy and triumph guru, Earl Kane, for help with the plumbing of the tank. After meeting Earl and spending only a couple of hours with him, I knew he would play a significant role in this build.
This is great. This is a neat looking bike. It's funny, I get doing this and I get excited about getting them done. I want to see it sitting on the ground running. retro stuff. Stuff I grew up with. It's kind of like I like to pull up to a stop sign and I know I've got the only scooter that looks like mine. And you didn't go get it off a, a shelf and put all the parts on a shopping cart and go home and build it. I make this stuff. I make the parts, I whittle it all out. I put it together and it's like my creations. Goal for today is we're going to make you a license plate bracket, the one I make to touch your license plate into your wheel. I'm going to make you a kickstand. And if we got some time left, we're going to make you the style of chain tensioner that I make, which is super simple. And just about anybody can make it at home with a drill. The guys coming back from Nam were into, into the spade design. And that's kind of what we're doing. We're, we're in that 60s, late 60s era of the bikes we're building. And this, this was a popular emblem. And it's, it's good looking visually. It just kind of fits the biker style a little bit too. I don't know if there's actually a biker reason. You, you see spades on a lot of oil tanks and kickstands and just decorations. And, um, so I can't say the idea that the spade shape was mine, but it makes a nice kickstand. The chain tensioner kind of keeps the chain from walking around and bouncing and beating your oil tank up. And you guys that are just starting to build a bike don't put the oil tank in the center. The chain will hit it. Leave yourself some room between the tank and the chain. The first one I got way too complicated on. And, uh, and if I, I just kept playing around. I thought there's got to be a way to do this really simple so the backyard guy can do it. And I started looking for existing mounts and holes I could use. And that's you know, I only came up with the cradle stand mount. So, I mean, even if you can't weld, you only gotta take your frame to somebody and have them weld one bracket on it. Any of you guys that got a bike can, can build this. You can't even get through a six pack of beer and you're done. First big bike that looked good, people fell over looking at. I built it when I got out of the Navy in the 60s. And it was a 37 Indian Scout. And I basically turned it into a bobber. I didn't stretch the front end. It had a little bit of rake, but the bike set low and level and was lean and didn't have anything on it it didn't need. And that's basically the same thing today. And that that was the first bike, and that was a, 40 years ago. On the license plate bracket, I mean, if you're at home, wherever, if you're making yourself one, get some poster board. Cut yourself out a template. Basically. 
the license plate bracket is going to tuck up in here. It's going to have two screws holding it. It's going to have a curved plate that is almost a chain guard and chain protector. And it gets the plate in nice. Nothing sticking out. Your bike looks real clean down the side. We got a tail light license plate bracket all in one piece, just nice and tidy. We'll put this back on the bike and you'll see how it's all tucked in nice too. And this is just brazing rod, it's brass rod, it's got a flux coating on it. The flux keeps the air away from the weld when you're first doing it. You just heat the metal up till it gets cherry red, but not the metal isn't melting. It's just cherry red. It opens up the pores. And you melt in this brass rod. And it, what you're doing, it's called brazing. And it's kind of an old school thing, but it gives you a little different look. You can get this kind of feathered out look on your edge. Hardly anybody does it. I thought it'd just be kind of cool because the bike's coming from this era. It's, it's actually a real strong connection. These bikes, the way they're put together at the factory, this tube is slid inside this tube. And if you look on these, you'll see this brass color. This is called sweating. They heat this up and it sucks the brass in between the two joints. That's the way these bikes were put together at the factory. This technology has been around for a long time. When you think about it, I mean, this bike's been around for a long time. You know, making this part kind of reminds me, a long time ago, back in the 60s and 70s, used to fly hang gliders. You'd go down to Torrance Beach. It was just so laid back and fun. Every night it was windy. I was down there. It was just this like freedom. And, um, I mean, minimum equipment, no power, just the wind, your little kite, and you. I'm going to run down to a place in Pedro called Century Cycle. 
and it has the most hard to explain lady you've ever met or ever gone to meet, Cindy. And she's been around motorcycling since the first day I think she took a breath of air. My dad, he was a sign painter and a boxer and started motorcycles. Was going to start a business in motorcycles when my brother got back from the Korean conflict in the Marine Corps, but he never came back. So for therapy, we started this shop. Well, we used to race for pink slips. That's where we got a lot of our money. Used to wax those guys on Saturday mornings up on Vincent Hill and then be waiting here for them. And if you were a good rider, he'd offer to let you get your bike back by drag racing him from here to the corner. And sometimes he'd take your bike and let you ride his bike for $100 because professionals never race for free. I'd hold the pink slip in the hundred bucks, and my dad never lost. But it was a hard thing when someone beats you with your own bike. It was a hard thing on your heart. My father started business in 36, and some of those winnings from his drag racing and, and road racing paid to keep us in business. So we've been around I'd like to say Bill started Century in 36, and I bought it in 76. And he passed away in 93, a year after Von Dutch passed away. One time Dutch came here to one of the parties, and my dad was telling Dutch that he needed more discipline with his numbers and his letters. <laughs> that was kind of a crack up. And Dutch was very respectful, because his dad was a sign painter too. That might have been why we kind of hit it off. And I did a, a rebuttal to a story that was on Channel 11 about Dutch. One of my last love letters, uh, he was hurting from the cirrhosis, and he said some things in the letter that no one else was supposed to see. And someone got a hold of it, and. They thought he was a Nazi racist because of the things he said in the letter, but I said, why should they feel so special? Dutch was very even-tempered. He was mad all the time, and he hated everybody. He even told me one time he hated himself. So, uh, he was a great guy in my eyes. I saw a different Dutch than other people saw. But this is my dad's. Uh, memorial up here. This uh, tank was painted the night before the memorial by Tattoo Tom. And this right here is a manifold for a Suzuki American Turbo Pack. All the ashes aren't in here because I had to give some to his girlfriends. On the day of the memorial, there were so many women lined up I had to put a petcock on this sucker to give them each a little piece. And one of his last wishes was for them to take those ashes and put in their douche bag and run them through one last time. Yeah. Mm. And I've even had some people wanting to bring their grandma's ashes and put in here with Bill just to give him something to play with. And he's also known for having the last factory built lightning and I have that in my bedroom. When you, when you tell someone, when you tell these guys you got a Vincent Lightning in your bedroom, they want to marry you right away. They want to marry you. You don't even have to know how to cook and they want to marry you. We go pretty fast. Okay, this is going to be the headlight mount, and uh, we're going to cut it off back here. This is going to be the fork stop area, Then this curve is going to be the pedestal for the headlight to sit on. So it's going to do two functions, fork stop and headlight mount.
chop it up a little bit. Yo. the horse smoke out and I was talking with chopper hits and they asked me how I made my seat and that goes I got a sledgehammer and a vise and I got a chop saw and I mean we just made this this is not fine-tuned there's a headlight bracket with the chop saw please pity our baby and spare me my mind I go home a beggar I won't be alive he hooked her, he kissed her, he turned her around. He threw her in the water where he knew she would drown. Yeah, this is uh, before cutting in a fender. I mean, cut any shape, you know, any sizes, and put together. Yeah, we call it donuts. Like that. It's a fender shape. There's no nothing here, nothing exciting, nothing good stuff on the shelf anymore. You know, it's already made and cheap. <laughs> So, that's why I make it. Just want to see, just want to build what I want. Yeah, build it by hand, fix it by hand. I like those philosophy. You know, people hanging out, friends hanging out, you know, helping each other. That's a beautiful thing too, you know. There, there's a spirit into it. 
and they'll last forever. After Jay narrowed the fender, it fit the width of the tire, but we realized it didn't fit the circumference of the tire, so we decided to take it over to Todd Cycles and have them massage it into place. My name's Todd. This is Todd Cycle. Um, we do a lot of custom fabrication uh, for different people in the industry. And we do sheet metal here, and we do pretty much a little bit of R&D and whatever. This is um, just a new suspended bike we're doing. Probably gonna call it the tank. It's kind of a monster fuel motor, suspended GSXR suspension, front and rear. We also incorporated all the linkage from the GSXR and the geometry. So hopefully it'll be a really fun bike to ride. My name is Dennis Sanchez, and I started the first day the doors opened. And uh, what I do here is primarily sheet metal. Today I'm going to fix the fender, make it look right, make it fit properly on the uh, tire. And it needs to be widened. And by widening it in the center, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to peak. So I'm going to take it down. And then it'll open up the sides. Mm -hmm. And then but by planishing it down, it's going gonna, it's gonna to shrink the radius, make it tighter. So then I have to stretch the rim, the, the outer rim of it, which will open it up. So that's it. Why? How's that? Who's perfect circle, huh? What do you think? I get, I get this section out of it. We're about halfway done with the build, and I'm getting really anxious to ride it. I can just imagine hitting the streets with some of my friends ripping through SoCal. Just can't I do?
But that's a real nice pattern. I like that. My name is Gilbert Gonzalez. I, uh, I'm into different things, and one of them is doing leather work. I really enjoy doing leather work. Um, I get called to do all kind of different things, and uh, like this is a challenge. This is a challenge I enjoy, enjoy doing, and hopefully, you'll be pleased with it. it it's almost like you, you see the uh, the rope sticking up, and what I could do is fill fill the rope so that when it when you do sit down on it, it doesn't go in. That's a hot little ticket there. Man. Got all your fender mounts, the oil tank mounts, got your seat mounts, access holes for running the wiring. One of the exciting parts today is going to be we're taking the motor that Meatball built, the Bricktown motor, and it's going to today be in my hands. Scott and I are going to set that motor in this frame for the first time. They're going to be married. This frame is going to go, wow. This is going to be exciting. Try this one on for size. Yep. Moving them hard and weird. One of the biggest things that I discovered is don't go with the chrome rims. Pull out those old aluminum ones and refurbish it, clean it, polish it, and it'll look like new. And at the end of that process, you have these two beautiful rims that look like chrome. What was the bike going to look like? And... I just wanted to Triumph with a modern tire and a, a fender that hugged it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was like my main look, you know, my head. So I found the bike, the lean was perfect. I wanted that tire in this type of fender that mm -hmm. stopped 12 o'clock. And, you know, I wanted a bobber. I didn't want to chop it, I didn't want to extend it. Mm -hmm. And when I met you, it blew my mind to see just how clean your bike looked. It was like, if I could just, you know, add what you have, these clean, Mm -hmm. components to this modern idea I have of a bobber, I'm going to have my dream. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's coming together, it's like exactly how I wanted it. Mm -hmm. When it gets to this state, it's on the lift, and you're actually putting it together, you start getting that high. It's like, it don't have to come apart again, this is, this is real. That thing's going to roll off of here next done. I got a friend in Sarasota. I got a friend in Mississippi, too. I got a daddy up in Detroit, too. He must be feeling blue. Oh, I'm an ex in New York City. Ain't my kitty sleeves sounding he's pretty. Well, I'm sitting right here, I'm thinking to myself, boys, good times we've had. Now I'm living across the ocean, thinking, should I go back west? I just went up for a visit, but things just ain't the same. Why? I saw the big seventh wonder Had me and I with Jerry Jill And I sat right down, man, I looked at my good buddy I'm thinking, yes sir, good times we had I remember when we ran out of money, we ran out of luck Cause when we ran with them honeys, we drove the main old trucks And we would sit right down, keep looking at the sun, boys Yeah, good times we had and we will sit right down, keep looking at the sun. Good time we have. Come on.
tail's pretty badass, I gotta say. I mean, it's fast. It's a hard tail. You're hanging on for dear life on that thing. <laughs> it just flies. I mean, that was like, that's the breakdown maiden cruise. <laughs> perfect. It's perfect, right? Perfect. Looks good next to yours. Yeah. And we will sit right down, keep looking at the sun. Good times we've had. And we will sit right down, keep looking at the sun, boys. Good times we've...